This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Recording by Leon Meyer. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg. Chapter 2 Adam. Man in the World. With ten sayings, God created the world, although a single saying would have sufficed. God desired to make known how severe the punishment to be meted out to the wicked, who destroy a world created with as many as ten sayings, and how goodly the reward destined for the righteous, who preserve a world created with as many as ten sayings. The world was made for man, though he was the last comer among its creatures. This was design. He was to find all things ready for him. God was the host who prepared dainty dishes, set the table, and then led his guests to his seat. At the same time, man's late appearance on earth is to convey an admonition to humility. Let him beware of being proud, lest he invite the retort that the gnat is older than he. The superiority of man to the other creatures is apparent in the very manner of his creation, although different from theirs. He is the only one who was created by the hand of God. The rest sprang from the word of God. The body of man is a microcosm, the whole world in miniature, and the world in turn is a reflex of man. The hair upon his head corresponds to the woods of the earth, his tears to a river, his mouth to the ocean. Also the world resembles the ball of his eye, the ocean that encircles the earth is like unto the white of the eye. The dry land is the iris, Jerusalem the pupil, and the temple the image mirrored in the pupil of the eye. But man is more than a mere image of this world. He unites both heavenly and earthly qualities within himself. In four he resembles the angels, in four the beasts. His power of speech, his discriminating intellect, his upright walk, the glance of his eye, they all make an angel of him. But, on the other hand, he eats and drinks, secretes the waste matter in his body, propagates his kind, and dies, like the beast of the field. Therefore, God said before the creation of man, The celestials are not propagated, but they are immortal. The beings on earth are propagated, but they die. I will create man to be the union of the two so that when he sins, when he behaves like a beast, death shall overtake him. But if he refrains from sin, he shall live for ever. God now bade all beings in heaven and on earth contribute to the creation of man, and he himself took part in it. Thus they will all love man, and if he should sin, they will be interested in his preservation. The whole world naturally was created for the pious, the God-fearing man, whom Israel produces with the helpful guidance of the law of God revealed to him. It was, therefore, Israel who was taken into special consideration at the time man was made. All other creatures were instructed to change their nature, if Israel should ever need their help in the course of his history. The sea was ordered to divide before Moses, and the heavens to give ear to the words of the leader. The sun and moon were bidden to stand still before Joshua, the ravens to feed Elijah, the fire to spare the three youths in the furnace, and the lion to do no harm to Daniel, the fish to spew forth Jonah, and the heavens to open before Ezekiel. In his modesty, God took counsel with the angels before the creation of the world, regarding his intention of making man. He said, For the sake of Israel I will create the world. As I shall make a division between light and darkness, so I will, in time to come, do for Israel and Egypt. Thick darkness shall be over the land, and the children of Israel shall have light in their dwellings. As I shall make a separation between the waters under the firmament and the waters above the firmament, so I will do for Israel. I will divide the waters for him when he crosses the Red Sea. As on the third day I shall create plants, so I will do for Israel. I will bring forth manna for him in the wilderness. 
as I shall create luminaries to divide day from night, so I will do for Israel. I will go before him by day in a pillar of cloud, and by night in a pillar of fire. As I shall create the fowl of the air and the fishes of the sea, so I will do for Israel. I will bring quails for him from the sea. And as I shall breathe the breath of life into the nostrils of man, so I will do for Israel. I will give the Torah unto him, the tree of life. The angels marveled that so much love should be lavished upon this people of Israel. And God told them, On the first day of creation, I shall make the heavens and stretch them out. So will Israel raise up the tabernacle as the dwelling place of my glory. On the second day, I shall put a division between the terrestrial waters and the heavenly waters. So will he hang up a veil in the tabernacle to divide the holy place and the most holy. On the third day, I shall make the earth put forth grass and herb. So will he, in obedience to my commands, eat herbs on the first night of the Passover, and prepare showbread for me. On the fourth day, I shall make the luminaries. So will he make a golden candlestick for me. On the fifth day, I shall create the birds. So will he fashion the cherubim with outstretched wings. On the sixth day, I shall create man. So will Israel set aside a man of the sons of Aaron as high priest for my service. Accordingly, the whole of creation was conditional. God said to the things he made on the first six days, If Israel accepts the Torah, you will continue and endure. Otherwise, I shall turn everything back into chaos again. The whole world was thus kept in suspense and dread until the day of the revelation on Sinai, when Israel received and accepted the Torah, and so fulfilled the condition made by God at the time when he created the universe. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Lewis Ginsburg The Angels and the Creation of Man God, in his wisdom, having resolved to create man, he asked counsel of all around him before he proceeded to execute his purpose. An example to man, be he never so great and distinguished, not to scorn the advice of the humble and lonely. First God called upon heaven and earth, then upon all other things he had created, and last upon the angels. The angels were not all of one opinion. The angel of love favored the creation of man, because he would be affectionate and loving. But the angel of truth opposed it, because he would be full of lies. And while the angel of justice favored it, because he would practice justice, the angel of peace opposed it, because he would be quarrelsome. To invalidate his protest, God cast the angel of truth down from heaven to earth, and when the others cried out against such contemptuous treatment of their companion, he said, Truth will spring back out of the earth. The objections of the angels would have been much stronger had they known the whole truth about man. God had told them only about the pious, and had concealed from them that there would be reprobates among mankind too. And yet, though they knew but half the truth, the angels were nevertheless prompted to cry out, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? God replied, The fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, what were they created for? Of what avail a larder full of appetizing dainties, and no guests to enjoy them? And the angels could not but exclaim, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth! Do as is pleasing in thy sight. For not a few of the angels, their opposition bore fatal consequences. When God summoned the band under the archangel Michael, and asked their opinion on the creation of man, they answered scornfully, What is man, that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visitest him? God thereupon stretched forth his little finger, and all were consumed by fire except their chief Michael and the same fate befell the band under the leadership of the archangel Gabriel. He alone of all was saved from destruction. The third band consulted was commanded by the archangel Labiel. 
taught by the horrible fate of his predecessors, he warned his troop. You have seen what misfortune overtook the angels who said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Let us have a care not to do likewise, lest we suffer the same dire punishment. For God will not refrain from doing in the end what he has planned. Therefore it is advisable for us to yield to his wishes. Thus warned, the angels spoke, Lord of the world, it is well that thou hast thought of creating man. Do thou create him according to thy will. And as for us, we will be his attendants and his ministers, and reveal unto him all our secrets. Thereupon God changed Labiel's name to Raphael, the rescuer, because his host of angels had been rescued by his sage advice. He was appointed the angel of healing, who has in his safekeeping all the celestial remedies, the types of the medical remedies used on earth. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Lewis Ginsburg The Creation of Adam When at last the ascent of the angels to the creation of man was given, God said to Gabriel, Go and fetch me dust from the four corners of the earth, and I will create man therewith. Gabriel went forth to do the bidding of the Lord, but the earth drove him away, and refused to let him gather up dust from it. Gabriel remonstrated, Why, O earth, dost thou not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, who founded thee upon the waters without props or pillars? The earth replied and said, I am destined to become a curse, and to be cursed through man, and if God himself does not take the dust from me, no one else shall ever do it. When God heard this, he stretched out his hand, took of the dust of the ground, and created the first man therewith. Of set purpose, the dust was taken from all four corners of the earth, so that if a man from the east should happen to die in the west, or a man from the west in the east, the earth should not dare refuse to receive the dead, and tell him to go whence he was taken. When a man chances to die, and wheresoever he is buried, there he will return to the earth from which he sprang. Also the dust was of various colors, red, black, white, and green, red for the blood, black for the bowels, white for the bones and veins, and green for the pale skin. At this early moment the Torah interfered. She addressed herself to God. O Lord of the world, the world is thine, thou canst do with it as seemeth good in thine eyes. But the man thou art now creating will be few of days and full of trouble and sin. If it be not thy purpose to have forbearance and patience with him, it were better not to call him into being. God replied, Is it for naught I am called long-suffering and merciful? The grace and loving-kindness of God revealed themselves particularly in his taking one spoonful of dust from the spot where, in time to come, the altar would stand, saying, I shall take man from the place of atonement, that he may endure. Chapter 2 Adam Part 2 of The Legend of the Jews, Volume 1 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Robert Scott The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg The Ideal Man Like all creatures, formed on the six days of creation, Adam came from the hands of the Creator, fully and completely developed. He was not like a child, but like a man of twenty years of age, twenty-one. The dimensions of his body were gigantic, reaching from heaven to earth, or what amounts to the same, from east to west, twenty-two. Among later generations of men, there were but few who in measure resembled Adam in his extraordinary size and physical perfections. Samson possessed his strength, Saul his neck, Absalom his hair, Ashahel his fleetness of foot, 
Uzziah, his forehead, Josiah, his nostrils, Zedekiah, his eyes, Zerubbabel, his voice. History shows that these physical excellencies were no blessings to many of their possessors. They invited the ruin of almost all. Samson's extraordinary strength caused his death. Saul killed himself by cutting his neck with his own sword. While speeding swiftly, Ashael was pierced by Abner's spear. Absalom was caught up by his hair in an oak, and thus suspended, met his death. Uzziah was smitten with leprosy upon his forehead. The darts that killed Josiah entered through his nostrils, and Zedekiah's eyes were blinded. 23. The generality of men inherited as little of the beauty as of the portentous size of their first father. The fairest women, compared with Sarah, are as apes compared with a human being. Sarah's relation to Eve is the same. And again, Eve was but an ape compared with Adam. His person was so handsome that the very sole of his foot obscured the splendor of the sun. 24. His spiritual qualities kept pace with his personal charm, for God had fashioned his soul with particular care. She is the image of God, and as God fills the world, so the soul fills the human body, as God sees all things and is seen by none. So the soul sees, but cannot be seen. As God guides the world, so the soul guides the body. As God in His holiness is pure, so is the soul. And as God dwells in secret, so doth the soul. 25. When God was about to put a soul into Adam's clod-like body, he said, quote, At which point shall I breathe the soul into him? Into the mouth? Nay, for he will use it to speak ill of his fellow man. Into the eyes? With them he will wink lustfully. Into the ears? They will hearken to slander and blasphemy. I will breathe her into his nostrils, as they discern the unclean and reject it, and take in the fragrant, so the pious will shun sin, and will cleave to the words of the Torah. 26. The perfections of Adam's soul showed themselves as soon as he received her. Indeed, while he was still without life, in the hour that intervened between breathing a soul into the first man and his coming alive, God revealed the whole history of mankind to him. He showed him each generation and its leaders, each generation and its prophets, each generation and its teachers, each generation and its scholars, each generation and its statesmen, each generation and its judges, each generation and its pious members, each generation and its average commonplace members, and each generation its impious members. The tale of their years, the number of their days, the reckoning of their hours, and the measure of their steps, all were made known unto him. 27. Of his own free will, Adam relinquished seventy of his allotted years. His appointed span was to be a thousand years, one of the Lord's days. But he said that only a single minute of life was apportioned to the great soul of David, and he made a gift of seventy years to her reducing his own years to nine hundred and thirty. The wisdom of Adam displayed itself to greatest advantage when he gave names to the animals. Then it appeared that God, 
in combating the arguments of the angels that opposed the creation of man, had spoken well, when he insisted that man would possess more wisdom than they themselves. When Adam was barely an hour old, God assembled the whole world of animals before him and the angels. The latter were called upon to name the different kinds, but they were not equal to the task. Adam, however, spoke without hesitation, quote, O Lord of the world, the proper name for this animal is ox, for this one horse, for this one lion, for this one camel. End quote. And so he called all in turn by name, suiting the name to the peculiarity of the animal. Then God asked him what his name was to be, and he said, Adam, because he had been created out of Adam. Again, God asked him his own name, quote, Adonai, Lord, because thou art Lord over all creatures, end quote. The very name God had given unto himself, the name by which the angels call him, the name that will remain immutable evermore. 29. But without the gift of the Holy Spirit, Adam could not have found names for all. He was in very truth a prophet, and his wisdom a prophetic quality. 30. The names of the animals were not the only inheritance handed down by Adam to the generations after him, for mankind owes all crafts to him, especially the art of writing, and he was the inventor of all the seventy languages. 31. And still another task he accomplished for his descendants. God showed Adam the whole earth, and Adam designated what places were to be settled later by men, and what places to remain waste. 32. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, The Fall of Satan. The extraordinary qualities with which Adam was blessed, physical and spiritual as well, aroused the envy of the angels. They attempted to consume him with fire, and he would have perished had not the protecting hand of God rested upon him and established peace between him and the heavenly host. 33. In particular, Satan was jealous of the first man, and his evil thoughts finally led to his fall. After Adam had been endowed with a soul, God invited all the angels to come and pay him reverence and homage. Satan, the greatest of the angels in heaven, with twelve wings, instead of six like all the others, refused to pay heed to the behest of God, saying, quote, Thou didst create us, angels, from the splendor of the Shekinah, and now Thou dost command us to cast ourselves down before the creature which thou didst fashion out of the dust of the ground? End quote. God answered, quote, Yet this dust of the ground has more wisdom and understanding than thou. End quote. Satan demanded a trial of wit with Adam, and God assented thereto, saying, quote, I have created beasts birds, and reptiles. I shall have them all come before thee and before Adam. If thou art able to give them names, I shall command Adam to show honor unto thee, and thou shalt rest next to the Shekinah of my glory. But if not, and Adam calls them by the names I have assigned to them, then thou wilt be subject to Adam and he shall have a place in my garden, and cultivate it." End quote. Thus spake God, and he betook himself to paradise, Satan following him. When Adam beheld God, he
he said to his wife, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. End quote. Now Satan attempted to assign names to the animals. He failed with the first two that presented themselves, the ox and the cow. God led two others before him, the camel and the donkey, with the same result. Then God turned to Adam and questioned him regarding the names of the same animals. Framing his questions in such wise that the first letter of the first word was the same as the first letter of the name of the animal standing before him. Thus Adam divined the proper name. And Satan was forced to acknowledge the superiority of the first man. Nevertheless, he broke out in wild outcries that reached the heavens, and he refused to do homage unto Adam as he had been bidden. 34. The host of angels, led by him, did likewise, in spite of the urgent representations of Michael, who was the first to prostrate himself before Adam in order to show a good example to the other angels. Michael addressed Satan, quote, Give adoration to the image of God, but if thou dost it not, then the Lord God will break out in wrath against thee. End quote. Satan replied, quote, If he breaks out in wrath against me, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. End quote. At once, God flung Satan and his host out of heaven down to the earth, and from that moment dates the enmity between Satan and man. The Legends of the Jews, Volume 1, by Rabbi Louis Ginsburg Woman When Adam opened his eyes the first time, and beheld the world about him, he broke into praise of God. Quote, How great are thy works, O Lord! End quote. But his admiration for the world surrounding him did not exceed the admiration all creatures conceived for Adam. They took him to be their creator, and they all came to offer him adoration. But he spoke, quote, Why do you come to worship me? Nay, you and I together will acknowledge the majesty and the might of him who hath created us all. The Lord reigneth. End quote. He continued, quote, He is apparelled with majesty. End quote. 36. And not alone the creatures on earth, even the angels thought Adam the Lord of all, and they were about to salute him with, quote, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, end quote. When God caused sleep to fall upon him, and then the angels knew that he was but a human being. 37. The purpose of the sleep that enfolded Adam was to give him a wife, so that the human race might develop, and all creatures recognize the difference between God and man. When the earth heard what God had resolved to do, it began to tremble and quake. Quote, I have not the strength, end quote, it said, quote, to provide for the herd of Adam's descendants, end quote. But God pacified it with the words, quote, I and thou together, we will find food for the herd. End quote. Accordingly, time was divided between God and the earth. God took the night, and the earth took the day. Refreshing sleep nourishes and strengthens man. It affords him life and rest, while the earth brings forth produce with the help of God, who waters it. Yet man must work the earth to earn his food. 38. The divine resolution to bestow a companion on Adam met the wishes of man, who had been overcome by a feeling of isolation when the animals came to him in pairs to be named. 39. 
to banish his loneliness, Lilith was first given to Adam as wife. Like him, she had been created out of the dust of the ground, but she remained with him only a short time, because she insisted upon enjoying full equality with her husband. She derived her rights from their identical origin. With the help of the ineffable name, which she pronounced, Lilith flew away from Adam and vanished in the air. Adam complained before God that the wife he had given him had deserted him, and God sent forth three angels to capture her. They found her in the Red Sea, and they sought to make her go back with the threat that, unless she went, she would lose a hundred of her demon children daily by death. But Lilith preferred this punishment to living with Adam. She takes her revenge by injuring babes, baby boys, during the first night of their life, while baby girls are exposed to her wicked designs until they are twenty days old. The only way to ward off the evil is to attach an amulet bearing the names of her three angel captors to the children, for such had been the agreement between them. 40. The woman destined to become the true companion of man was taken from Adam's body. For, quote, only when like is joined unto like, the union is indissoluble. End quote. 41. The creation of woman from man was possible because Adam originally had two faces, which were separated at the birth of Eve. 42. When God was on the point of making Eve, he said, quote, I will not make her from the head of man, lest she carry her head high in arrogant pride, not from the eye, lest she be wanton-eyed, not from the ear, lest she be an eavesdropper, not from the neck, lest she be insolent, not from the mouth, lest she be a tattler, not from the heart, lest she be inclined to envy, not from the hand, lest she be a meddler, not from the foot, lest she be a gadabout. I will form her from a chaste portion of the body." End quote and to every limb and organ as he formed it god said quote, be chaste be chaste end quote. nevertheless in spite of the great caution used woman has all the faults god tried to obviate the daughters of zion were haughty and walked with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes sarah was an eavesdropper in her own tent when the angel spoke with Abraham, Miriam was a talebearer, accusing Moses. Rachel was envious of her sister Leah. Eve put out her hand to take the forbidden fruit, and Dinah was a gadabout. 43. The physical formation of woman is far more complicated than that of man, as it must be for the function of childbearing, and Likewise, the intelligence of woman matures more quickly than the intelligence of man. 44. Many of the physical and psychical differences between the two sexes must be attributed to the fact that man was formed from the ground and woman from the bone. Women need perfumes while men do not. Dust of the ground remains the same no matter how long it is kept. Flesh, however, requires salt to keep it in good condition. The voice of woman is shrill, not so the voice of men. When soft viands are cooked, no sound is heard, but let a bone be put in a pot, and at once it crackles. A man is easily placated, not so a woman. A few drops of water suffice to soften a clod of earth. A bone stays hard, and if it were to soak in water four days. The man must ask the woman to be his wife, and not the woman the man to be her husband. 
because it is man who has sustained the loss of his rib, and he sallies forth to make good his loss again. The very difference between the sexes in garb and social forms goes back to the origin of man and woman for their reasons. Woman covers her hair in token of Eve's having brought sin into the world. She tries to hide her shame, and women precede men in funeral cordage, because it was woman who brought death into the world. And the religious commands addressed to women alone are connected with the history of Eve. Adam was the heave offering of the world, and Eve defiled it. As expiation, all women are commanded to separate a heave offering from the dough, and because woman extinguished the light of man's soul, she is bidden to kindle the Sabbath light. 45. Adam was first made to fall into a deep sleep before the rib for Eve was taken from his side. For had he watched her creation, she would not have awakened love in him. To this day, it is true that men do not appreciate the charms of women whom they have known and observed from childhood up. Indeed, God had created a wife for Adam before Eve, but he would not have her, because she had been made in his presence. Knowing well all the details of her formation, he was repelled by her. 46. But when he roused himself from his profound sleep, and saw Eve before him in all her surpassing beauty and grace, he exclaimed, quote, This is she who caused my heart to throb many a night. End quote. Yet he discerned at once what the nature of woman was. She would, he knew, seek to carry her point with man either by entreaties and tears or flattery and caresses. He said, therefore, quote, This is my never silent bell. End quote. 47. The wedding of the first couple was celebrated with pomp, never repeated in the whole course of history since. God himself, before presenting her to Adam, attired and adorned Eve as a bride. Yea, he appealed to the angels, saying, quote, Come, let us perform services of friendship for Adam and his helpmate, for the world rests upon friendly services, and they are more pleasing in my sight than the sacrifices Israel will offer upon the altar. End quote. The angels accordingly surrounded the marriage canopy, and God pronounced the blessings upon the bridal couple, as the Hazan does under the hoopah. The angels then danced and played upon musical instruments before Adam and Eve in their bridal chambers of gold, pearls, and precious stones, which God had prepared for them. And Adam called his wife Aisha, and himself he called Ish, abandoning the name Adam, which he had borne before the creation of Eve, for the reason that God added his own name, Yah, to the names of the man and the woman, Yad to Ish, and he to Isha, to indicate that as long as they walked in the ways of God and observed his commandments, his name would shield them against all harm. But if they went astray, his name would be withdrawn, and instead of Ish, there would remain Esh, fire, a fire issuing from each and consuming the other. 48. End of Chapter 2, Part 2 The Ideal Man, The Fall of Satan, Woman Read by Robert Scott, July the 5th, 2007